What's up guys? For today's watch review, we're going to be talking about the Citizen Promaster Skyhawk. This is the Blue Angels edition. Before we get into the review, let's do a quick wrist check. I'm rocking my Casio G-Shock GM 6900. I have done a review on this one, so check it out. It is a fantastic, very fun watch. Going back to the Skyhawk, let's start off with our first talking point, which will be a 360 view followed by dimensions. Here's the front, and I'll show you the sides. It's always nice to look at a watch and see how light falls on it on different angles. And there's the case back, which is super cool. You've got the Blue Angels crest. And then here are the dimensions. You can tell right away that this is a larger watch, but if you're familiar with Citizen, any of the Citizen Hawk watches, it's pretty much the same. So with it being so big, I'm fine with the diameter. I take away one point on the score because of the case thickness. With it being almost 15 millimeters, I think that's a little bit too, it sits too high on my wrist. I think 13 and a half to 14 millimeters would have been great. So I give score a four out of five for dimensions. Next talking point is price. So on the website, MSRP, you're looking at 895 but it's listed at about 750 and then on the street you're realistically paying about 550. Um, I think that it's a little bit high for the price. For other citizen watches that share the same caliber, on any given day you could buy one for $300 easy. So for the score on price I give it a three and a half out of five because I get that it's more expensive because it's the Blue Angels edition and whatever, but really the features are all the same. Nothing else has changed, so I think they could have made it more in the $350 to $400 range. So, 3.5 out of 5. Next talking point is functions and features, which there are many. I'm not going to make this an instructional how-to video. The Citizen website has a fantastic step-by-step -step video for how to set your watch, so this is going to be as brief as I can make it so I don't drag on and on and on because I could go a 10 minute video just on how to use this watch. But your top dial right there, that's your UTC. So really you've got three different ways to tell the time. Your analog hands, your digital display, and UTC. So that's fantastic. This right here is your charge indicator. So you can see I'm at a middle to high charge. I should probably let this sit on the windowsill today. Underneath that if you can see, you've got different countries. So USA, Europe, uh, was that China and Japan? This is for your automatic time or atomic timekeeping. So when you are manually or forcing the watch to receive a radio signal, it will show you which country it is receiving that signal from. Right here is your 24-hour dial. This digital display right here tells you which time zone your analog hands are in, and then this digital display is your digital display. So right now my hands are telling me time from LAX and then my digital display is LAX time as well. You can set this, your hands to whichever time zone you want and your digital display to whichever time zone you want. I prefer to have them both set to the same time because I'm not a world traveler, I'm not tracking different time zones or whatever. Underneath here at the very bottom is your mode dial so it tells you which mode you're currently in so right now there's TME which is your time mode calendar right there timer stopwatch world time setting alarm 1 alarm 2 and then RX which is your atomic timekeeping so to access these separate modes you pull out your dial or your crown one click to position 1 and this allows you to change whichever mode you want to get to um, and then manually setting, you know, changing whichever you want in any of the modes, you can pull it, you can either pull it out to the second click for whichever mode you're in as applicable, or you might have to utilize these buttons to change the mode, which that video on the Citizen webpage will tell you exactly how to do all of that. You do have loom, uh, excellent loom on the indices and on the hands, and also a backlight for your digital display. Another fantastic feature, the fact that you have two sources of light, for this watch, I absolutely love that. However, the score that I'm going to give this watch, 
Might upset some of you that already own this watch, but I give it a 3 out of 5. And that's not because of the quality. Quality is fantastic. Everything about this watch functions flawlessly. But it's the access to the functions is why I take away points. Um, looking at the, or putting yourself in the shoes of a pilot, it would be much better to just have another button here to where you can scroll through the modes just by the push of a button. The fact that while you're wearing this watch, you have to pull out the crown to, you know, let's say use a stopwatch, which is a very commonly used function on a watch, especially for military members. You have to pull out the crown, turn it to stopwatch, push it in, and it's not that big of a deal, but it, it becomes tedious if you're out in a mission or out the field and you add more things that you have to think about take away your mind from your control panel in order to use something on your watch. So I think they, they could have done better by just making it a little bit easier to use. I think for other people it's a very fun user interface but for actual mission related items they should have made it a lot more easier to use. Um, again these are all my opinions this is just what I think would have made this watch more practical. So three out of five for functions and features. Next talking point is illumination. So let's go ahead and cue in the footage in a dark room. As you can see, the illumination is fantastic. I think Citizen by far is in my list top three best looms that you can get in a watch. And the fact that you have the backlight too, let's see what the backlight looks like just in a regular well-lit room. So even then it's fantastic. Uh, so illumination, five out of five. That was not a difficult score to come up with. Next talking point is visibility. So you've got a very good contrast between the, the face and the indices and the hands. So, you know, any time of day, it's very easy to quickly identify your hour and minute hand and the indices, so five out of five. Which is surprising because the watch has a very busy face. A lot of watches that are complex like this, it's, it's kind of difficult to tell the time quickly. But you've got very easily identifiable hands and then a fantastic digital display to tell you the time if that's how you choose to look at the time as well. So five out of five for visibility. Next talking point is button and crown quality. Let's zoom in here. You can see you've got these knurled edges at the base of the buttons and then on the crown as well and that is fantastic. I absolutely love this design. I think it gives any watch a higher level of quality or even perceived quality and they, they operate fantastically. The crown is very precise so when you pull it out one click or two clicks it doesn't feel muddy at all um, so five out of five for button and crown quality next talking point is band quality and comfort the band is titanium as well as the case which attributes to the weight it's a very light watch you would expect this watch to be heavy kind of like an ecozilla it took me by surprise when i took it out of the case um, just how light it was so let's go ahead and show you what it looks like on the wrist. But there you go. It's just a phenomenal band. Quality of the band is fantastic. I will take away one point because of how you have to adjust the band. It has the pin and collar system, which if you are not familiar with that, I highly recommend that you do some research. It's not difficult to do. But if you're walking in on adjusting the band for the first time and you don't know what a pin and collar system is, you're going to be screwed when you lose the collar. Basically, it's just like, uh, it's not like a tension pin. It's a, it's a regular pin and then it goes through a little cylindrical collar and that's what gives you the tension to keep the links together. So if you lose that collar and you just put the pin through, it's going to fall apart as soon as you put it on. So because of that, I take away one point. I know that a lot of people have no problem with a pin and collar system, but to me, the difference between a pin and collar versus just a standard tension rod or screws is not that much different. So they should have just had the one that's easier to do. Um, but again, four out of five is still a, is still a great score. So please don't 
Please don't destroy me in the comment section. Uh, next talking point is the X Factor. This is things like attractiveness and charisma and all that stuff. X Factor, this gets a score of 5 out of 5. Everything about this watch just exudes quality and it looks so good. And the fact that it has the name Blue Angels tied to it. I mean, Blue Angels is like the... the well, what's the word? I don't even know what the the word I'm looking for. They're like the standard of American awesomeness, right? Like when you say the word U.S. Navy, you think about either the Navy SEALs or the Blue Angels. So the fact that they have such a high, highly revered name in the, the title of this watch already gives it brownie points or, um, yeah, it, it already gives it like kudos, you know, or street credit. Um, so five out of five for the X Factor. I think a lot of you will agree with me um, and you know plenty of you out there are probably fans of the military so just the fact that this has something to do with the military really gives it that charm and charisma uh, next talking point is my overall thoughts and should you buy this watch so t averaging out all the scores um, we get an overall score of 4.3 out of 5 I think that is an accurate representation of how I feel about this watch yeah, there are some things here and there that I would change, specifically how to use the functions. But that's really my only gripe. Everything about this watch is just fantastic. And I just realized I didn't even talk about the bezel. Um, that's really frustrating. I should have caught that immediately. But yeah, just going back to functions and features, you do have this slide rule bezel. It's uh, just a friction bezel, so there's no clicks or anything. I do like this because, not that I would ever use the slide rule, but if you were inclined to ever use it, um, I like this system better than having the crown to like turn it because this way you can just quickly get to whichever numbers you want. But anyways, going back to my overall thoughts and should you buy it, uh, again, fantastic watch. It looks super clean and it's very light. And for some people that might be disappointing because you like a little bit of heft, but I promise you it it will get old real quick having such a heavy watch. So the fact that this is all titanium and it's super light means that you can wear this all day long, not worry about damaging it at all because it's super tough. Um, and, and that's a great thing because you've got this beautiful looking watch that you don't really have to worry about. You know, there's a lot of watches out there that look super good, but you're kind of always nervous to, to damage your baby because they're just not made out of tough material. But this is the best of both worlds. It is a beauty and a beast. Um, so, yeah, I, I actually, even with the price, even with the high price tag, I recommend this watch. This is a perfect everyday watch because it's got everything you need, um, you know, even more so, more than what you need, but it still does everything flawlessly and easy enough to, to it to be a practical watch. So, those are my two cents. Uh, I hope that this helps you with your next knife purchase. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe so that way you stay up to date with uh, all my reviews. Plus, it's just a great way to show me support, know that I'm actually getting my information out there to you guys. And I really appreciate my current subscribers because you guys are the reason why I get motivated to keep putting out videos. Anyways, that's all I got to say. Thanks for watching and make sure to tune in for my next episode. All right, bye.